So I want to ask all of you a question. How many in here worked out today? Wow, a lot. I'm actually surprised. That's great. How many of you in here took a shower today? OK, I was hoping for 100% participation, but a few of you didn't raise your hands. OK, I assume you took baths. You took baths. No, you, I assume that. So how many of you have walked on carpet today? OK, there's actually some carpet when you came into this building. So all of you should be raising your hands. <laughs> So why do I ask these questions? Well, at Coverti, we make oil. And we're all very familiar with the fact that oil is a key raw material for the gasoline in our cars. But oil is actually quite ubiquitous. It's an integral part of many of the products that we use every day. So oil is a key ingredient for the nylons and the polyesters of the running shoes, for those of you who worked out, and the jerseys. Oil is a key ingredient of many of the personal care items we use, from soaps to shampoos and the detergents that we use to wash our towels. And oil is a key ingredient of many uh, materials, including all of the carpet in this facility. Oil is what made up those, the, the, those products. So where do, does all this oil come from? So the main source that we're all very familiar with is petroleum. And it's a huge market. A lot of oil is used not just to make gasoline, but to manufacture products. Um, but there's also other sources of oil. And in fact, there's a growing amount of oil coming from things like plants, like palm oil, that are used to replace some petroleum products. And in the case of palm oil, they're actually tearing down rainforests to make room for palm plantations. So this isn't sustainable. Um, and animal fats also makes up another source of, of oil. So the question that we asked at Coverti when we started the company was, is there a way to produce oils as our demand and our consumption continues to grow in a way that's sustainable, sustainable for the environment? And in order for that to be actually adopted and commercialized, it has to be sustainable for business. So we asked all the business questions as well. And so our answer to those questions was a resounding yes. And before I talk about how we're doing it and what we're doing, I want to pause for a second and talk about something completely different, which is waste. And this is kind of moving on its own for some reason. <laughs> so um, there's a, a lot of waste that we generate in this society. For some reason, we're very wasteful. So think about the last picnic or barbecue that you went to. Um, it turns out that in the US alone, every year, we throw away enough paper and plastic cups, spoons, and forks to circle the equator of the entire Earth 300 times. In the US alone, we purchase 30 billion bottles just for plastic water or, or for bottles of plastic just for water alone. And eight out of 10 of those end up in landfills. So that's 24 billion plastic bottles that end up in landfills just for water. So and in fact, there's actually an island of waste in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, an island that people have estimated has the area of twice that of the continental US. That's a lot of waste. And this waste is filled with carbon and energy that is underutilized and wasted. But in nature, there is no waste. In nature, one organism's waste is another organism's fuel. It's the carbon cycle. And it's an integral part of the photosynthetic process. When a plant, a tree dies, uh, carbon waste or carbon dioxide and methane is, reducing, is released into the atmosphere. And then another plant is growing and is capturing that CO2. And the cycle continues. So one of the key uh, machines, as it were, for recycling this carbon in nature would be microorganisms. So there's trillions upon trillions of microorganisms in this world, and many of them have very beneficial uses. In fact, there's over 10,000 microbes in our bodies uh, that are integral to making our immune system function well. And myself and the people on my team, we're all quite excited about microbes. I don't expect people in here to be as excited about <laughs> microbes as I am. I wish you were, but I guarantee that you're excited about many of the products of microbes. So there's some wine over there that people enjoy, a product of microbes. If you like your Merlot or your Chardonnay, that's a product of microbes. If you like to have a pint of beer uh, after work during happy hour, a product of microbes. If you like cheese or yogurt, or even when you're taking medication, these are all products of microbes. So there's some really good microbes out there. <laughs> so the question that we asked at Converti is, are there microbes that could help us with our carbon waste problem? 
So there's the natural carbon recycling problem, that ha uh, a process that happens on the surface of the earth, but are there microbes that are actually supercharged and that can recycle carbon as fast as we're dumping it into our atmosphere and into our landfills and those things? And it turns out that there's a special class of microbes that you find in what you can consider nature smokestacks deep below the earth, places like hydrothermal vents or geothermal vents where there's dissolved gases like carbon dioxide and methane. And there's these microbes there that are really integral to that ecosystem where they take the carbon and recycle it into the nutrients uh, that are required for that ecosystem to thrive. So we asked the question, can we take these microbes or microbes like these and harness their supercharged carbon recycling abilities to address our carbon problem on the surface of the earth? And the answer we found is yes. Uh, and so what we're developing at Converti is a technology to take these microbes and convert CO2 into products. And what kind of products should you convert CO2 into? Well, naturally oil, because oil is a fundamental building block of, of many of the products that we create every day. So we believe that with this solution, and there are many people that are also using microbes as a way of recycling carbon, and so that we're all a part of this process to create beneficial products from waste carbon sources. Uh, good for the planet. What about business? How do you adopt that? How do you make sure that there are companies that will actually commercialize this? Well, with our technology, we're able to make not just any type of oil, but we're able to customize them to make the oils for carpet, which will be different than the oils for detergents, as an, as an example. Um, so something that's good for the environment and good for business. And with this type of technology, we're ushering in a new type of model. Um, so where you start with the traditional model, which is large micro refinery, macro mega refineries basically, where you have centrally located, massive, multi-billion dollar uh, you know, refineries that take one type of oil coming in and multiple products going out. You have to find markets for all these. Uh, instead, we're ushering in an age, we believe, where we have a new model, which is the minor, uh, micro refineries. And this um, PowerPoint has a <laughs> mind of its own. <laughs> so with the micro refineries, you can scale down and have local waste conversion, waste mitigation. We generate waste locally, so locally convert waste into oils that are used locally by manufacturers. A detergents manufacturer needs a different oil than a carpets manufacturer. So that's what we're building at Converti. So when we started this company, we actually had a vision of how could we possibly uh, address two of the main issues that are facing society. One is our growing and amazing amount of waste that we produce, carbon waste. And the other is our increasing demand for oil and some of the very unsustainable ways in which we're accessing that oil. And our solution was to connect the two. Let's take one problem, carbon waste, and address the other and create a carbon loop that we see in nature. So I'm very happy to be here with this group of people who also think big things. We, we dream big dreams and we're imagining something that we believe is impossible, but we're gonna make it possible. So we envision a world where there are no landfills where CO2 is captured and reused, and where we have a fundamental different perspective, fundamentally different perspective on how we manufacture products, and we manufacture them using sustainably sourced uh, oils and other materials. Uh, and so we are, um, you know, I'm very happy to be here to present our company to you, and happy to uh, ask any of you if you can join us in that effort as well. Thank you. <laughs>